mature if I said no. Because that's what people, the natural reaction says, no, no, my daughter. No, no, my mom. No, my, no, no. It's just me. This is between me and you. Yeah, they don't understand that kind of thing. This is between you and me. No. Okay. Um, um, and then I understood that some uh, latent reflection that, uh, that there was another time. If you if you show them that you you know kind of that kind of you should call it weakness. You wouldn't call it weakness because nobody should be placed in that kind of situation. When I begged them to kill me, they they didn't. Other people who beg for their lives were killed, and so on. So that is one point of inflection. The other one was about my, my time, my my you know, what she's been the same before. And, um, and so I didn't know what happened. Um, but the, the guy tried to say that she she's uh, seriously wounded in the hospital and uh, if I give information they need, she survived. They will treat her. Or they rather won't treat her. So her life was in my hands, basically. No, 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 don't answer it now. Think it over. Tomorrow I'll ask you. The next morning. I said, okay. Let me see her. Well, let me see. Since you don't believe a military, an honorable, honorable military, courageous military of the Chilean armed forces, you're doubting my work. Yes, I am. Bring it. Let me see it. Okay, I'll see if I can be right. No, no conversation again about it. I'm just a bit curious about uh, how you were involved in the struggle before Finchet came in. I just don't know any background really about, about your activism really. So I just wanted a little bit of context yeah. as well, just about what you yeah. about what kind of Well, I would, as we used to say in the concentration camp, yeah. I didn't do anything. It was just, it oh. was a, a curfew, and they got me in the curfew, and that, that's it. And that is a lie, because I was involved. Um, <laughs> no, I was, I think I became involved in politics when I was about quite young. Mm -hmm. uh, due to other circumstances that I explained in the book. And uh, yeah, I became very politically active. Um, then during the government, of, uh, the government also very, very active. And, uh, and my, uh, my partner as well, she was in the central committee of the party. And um, yeah, lo lots of people, people I talked to that and other reason for writing the people who can't say can't talk uh, but after the coup actually the very little activity was uh, going on apart from uh, getting supplies to other people who are isolated lost these jobs um, people who needed to leave the country people who need to go and uh, so. so we were kind of organizing that kind of thing and um, yeah so it wasn't just a curfew. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, when did you know that, that you wanted to write the book? When did you know that you could write the book? At the beginning I was numbed. I couldn't, and that's another problem uh, people like uh, with this kind of experiences uh, face. Is that you can't talk, you can't say. At the beginning, it's a denial. Huh? I remember when I arrived here, I was in a reception hotel, and uh, some of the workers there, uh, uh, English the people were, uh, spoke Spanish, I went translating. Um, journalists came, because we came in a plane full of uh, journalists. Came. There was a guy from the Times, and the, the girl was translating what happened to us my friend and I, and suddenly she starts to cry. And we look at each other. What she cry? We were okay. So that is the problem. So you are okay. In the concentration camp, if you were not dead, you are okay. What happened? Oh, they beat him up uh, again uh, in the basement, <coughs> and uh, they broke his arm, but he's fine. I, I couldn't get up from bed for months because of the damage to kidney. And, um, 
but I was okay. You're fine. So the threshold is kind of, of accepting this situation grows. But what happens when you have to face all the kind of those things? So, but you can't, you can't explain, you can't say, you can't find the words. You don't remember me, but I shared some of those coach journeys with you at the time the general was in London. Graham. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I was campaigning to get the bastard come or export it or something. Yeah. And um, you may have been. They were new coaches. They were. I was very comfortable, right? But I felt, you know, still like you in the box. You didn't see me crying. <laughs> no, I never saw you cry. You were very strong. And you were a great help because I had the most terrible struggle like everyone else that when we were campaigning to make the general to stay here. Yeah. And then yeah. go and instead of going back. And you know I had lawyers and everything, just yeah. one tiny cog, you know, that huge thing mm -hmm. to keep him and then send him to Spain. Yeah. And I've had my experiences too, and in the past and almost at the point of writing a book about them someday. It takes years. Yeah. But to leave that to one side as an activist since that time, it's quite a long time ago now, seventeen years. Yeah. Yeah. Sixteen years. Mm -hmm. I can feel the same darkness mm -hmm. descending on this country now. Mm -hmm. I've been campaigning against renditions, yeah. against the American practices, the whole thing. It's been a horrible experience. Mm -hmm. There's a very good book that's come out now by Ian Cobain on The Guardian called Cruel Britannia. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's doing to you, but it's doing the hell of things to me because I can see the same darkness as being imposed very slowly and very carefully mm -hmm. because it's not true. I wonder if you, you feel about this, you yeah. pick it up as well, what you think about it. Yeah. Well, let, let, let me touch a bit on, on, on this. <coughs> no, it, it's true with you, but um, I, 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 as, as a therapist, I've seen hundreds of people. And of those people I've seen, uh, most of them have been English people, men and women, mm. uh, uh, of this country. And where I work in London, I see all sorts of people with more, more, more ethnicities there. And uh, I, I think I can say this with a certain degree of authority. So I want to reflect a bit on this. Uh, you can interrupt me. I would like this not to be just another account of the horrors of man uh, committed against man, and the aftermath of these cruel practices, I would like us all to reflect a bit. I believe it's not longer possible to get used to these accounts, to leave them there, to be forgotten the next day, because they are so similar, because there are so many, because they are so horrific. I've been for years trying to understand, trying to make sense of what happened, beyond the simple, they are bad people, horrible people. After all, I am not just a victim of their perverse, the perversity, I am a man, just like them. We are essentially the same. I am the victim, but I am the perpetrator as I am the perpetrator as well. Being a man doesn't that makes me potential a potential torturer as well. What is different between them and me? How to find out an answer? How to test my belief that humans are all essentially good and that along the way of our history we actually lost our way? Well, I am a human. I have all the requirement, the required elements to be good or twisted. My essence is the same as that of everyone else. What if I use myself as the testing subject? What if I install the lab inside myself and try? It has been a long journey. The first step was to acknowledge that I was a very much damaged person that the, mal the maltreatment had left me in a very bad shape. Actually, it has, le it has left me at the border of a precipice, with very few options. I had nothing to lose. I had already lost everything. My love was very fragile. I only needed to the strength to commit myself to an uncertain journey that could also end, end with my existence. I took the chance, as I'd always done in my life, all or nothing. Let's face it, I have been a man like every other man, born in a segregationist society, 
in a matriarchal society, in a profoundly unequal society, in an unjust society, and being the victim and witness of all this, and in many ways an accomplice and a participant. I decided it was necessary to dismantle myself a man, uh, as a man, layer by layer, to see what was there, like the layers of an onion, and carefully examine what really was there, what my feelings, my desires, my needs, my fears, my pain, what they were. It is, pain, it is a painful process, a harrowing process, a desolating and lonely process, and it is because one is questioning the very foundations of what you are or have been until then, and more often than not, the destruction of the scaffolding is necessary. A scaffold that is embedded in your flesh and it will certainly hurt to tear it apart. What did I found in this dissecting of the subject? I found the hypocrite, the hypocrite, the sexist, the ignorant, the liar, loads of anger, the love starved, the abused, <coughs> the hungry boy, the humiliated boy, the deprived man, the cruel man. But I also found a strong, determined man. A man with an immense capacity for love, an incredible desire to understand, to learn, to comprehend. A lovely man. I visualized the man that I should have been. And that man I love to keep. I found out how I had been distorted, how I was made to believe, how I had been sold the wrong one via deprivation, falsehoods, threats and fear. Confusion has taken hold and it drains. Neurosis is the confusion of the feelings because all the feelings come up at once at times of despair or fear. The feelings are disproportional in neurosis and affect us disproportionately. Our actions will be inevitably disproportionate. But now comes the hardest part of this process, arriving to the conclusion that the only alternative is to eliminate the old one. This is particularly hard because the old one is all you have. The old one has been you for so far, for so long. The old one has brought you here. The old one is your history. It's all you know. The, only, the old one is you. There is no other way to name it. It's called suicide. How to, to eliminate what is known when you do not know what is in the store ahead? How to jump into a, the unknown, into a profound, profound dark place? All these questions assault you and you have no answers and the fear increases. It's the fear of death. But I had an advantage. I had been there many times before. I knew the smell of his breath and I knew what to expect. It is now or never. It has been said before. The word, the word fear is fear itself. Let's not forget. Let's never forget. And let's remember, remember every moment of our lives. We are all here because we were born of a woman. More so, we came to this world from between the legs of a woman in a mixture of blood, fluids, and tearing of flesh. If we love life, love life, our life, and we reject death, it is because of a woman. In the act of birth, the only she told us to be, is then, it is then logical to revere, the, to revere the woman, every woman, to revere the blood, her fluids, and her flesh. Someone once said, if you are a human, that it is in the begin, at the beginning of time, and has just acquired reasoning, and happen to ask yourself, where do we come from? Wouldn't the first place to look for an answer be between the legs of a woman? Why looking at the start if the answer is there in front of you all the time? Wouldn't you be amazed at the miracle of creation, at the power of a woman, and say, you are amazing? How do you do it? <laughs> you must have special powers. Without you, we wouldn't be here. I would not be here. And all we did was to love you. We must continue loving you. When did all start to go wrong? When we started to hate women and decided to uh, oppress them, to exploit them, to humiliate them, to torture them, to murder them, 
it is a difficult question to answer because it is difficult to trace and locate the scene of the first crime against women. What is not difficult to ascertain is that things were not always this way. For the simple reason that we will not be here today as a species, uh, today as a species without love, respect, altruism and cooperation. It is understood that at one point during the Ice Ages there were no more than a couple of thousands of individuals left on the face of the earth, the planet. If, as it is often argued, we as a species were always being belligerent, unfeeling, murderous, criminal, we, who, we would have quarreled until there was no one left alive, until total extinction. It sounds like a carefully concerted plan over the time to eliminate the old fell before women, the wisdom and the power to create and look after life. Why? Where the all powerful Lord did came from to twist things upside down and subjugate women, to pervert life in such a way that until today we carry on their instructions almost without questioning, and in some countries to the extreme of mutilating and burning young girls and women for the mere fact of being too pretty, looking at a boy, or just for being. Where is this country? This country alone, hundreds of women are. Where in this country, ha uh, in this country alone, hundreds of women are murdered every year by the so-called partners of hus or husbands. Where young girls are abused and exploited. You may ask yourself, what on earth is a former victim of torture is doing, talking about the plight of women, the genocide of women? Well. It has everything to do with torture because patriarch or male dominated societies have been oppressing, exploiting, subjugating and torturing women. Half of the world population is condoning the mistreatment of the rest of the population. By negating the right of women, it wipes, it wipes out the rights of everyone and everything else, including nature and the environment. <coughs> with the mistreatment of women, it violates, it violates this, uh, ah, I lost my track here. We learn that women, no matter her condition, are, are the same, ah, even when the women are having children, no matter what the condition, they are the same abuse. I know because I've been there, I travel there, I have been, I've been the, I have been the child, and I have been the woman. I have traveled inside, and I have inhabited, inhabited the ancestral woman, and she is not dissimilar to me, only more awesome, more intelligent, more feeling, more whole, and many times more beautiful. In short, very different. <laughs> what I'm really talking about is the, the synthetization, the process of losing the ability to feel, to empathize, but subjecting the organism to intense pain, fear for his life is the first re uh, fear for his life. Fear for his life is the first reaction. There are always two options for a developing organism: fight or fly. Unfortunately for a young be being, these options are usually not available, as there is total external dependency. It is totally on his own, with whatever constitution chains are provided with. Is with two options then a repression or death. In the case of us humans, the overwhelming majority will repress. That is the human prerogative. The ability to repress pain or unbearable traumatic experiences and thus we survive. But unfortunately, there is a price to pay, a heavy price. There will be no conscious access to the repressed and now locked away traumatic experiences. Locked away trauma is locked away pain. Pain is an enormous force, a high valence energy that will keep reverberating in the system, trying to find an expression. It will affect every function from sleeping, eating, breathing, etc. And the problem is its effect, and its effect will be inordinate, random, out of control. Going back to the question, 
of what is all this have to do with torture and its aftermath. The question to understand is not just how torture is practiced and why. The political and social framework, we have to understand why a human being, you and me, can, given the opportunity, easily be the perpetrators of torture, or at least justified in certain circumstances. First of all, I believe we should stop talking about torture in the sense of the torture, torture chamber alone, because in doing so, we are limiting, con constricting, concealing mistreatment with a limited context, obscuring the practice taking place in everyday life, making it acceptable, denying its widespread existence. We tend to be horrified by Guantanamo, Abu Ghraib, Argentina, General, uh, Argentina generals of Chile, Pinochet, but the, we tend to say very little about the everyday occurrence of violence and torture against women and children in our doorstep. Here we have to consider the importance of the human sexual activity. I think we, uh, men, we need I mean, a bit, bit more, more of courage. I think we are deep down we are very cowards in facing this kind of thing. It's Sometimes there is no other name, I'm afraid. Um, in, in practicing uh, therapy, being a therapist myself, in talking in the in hundreds of places I've been in giving talks, I think we have to try, go there, go where the fear is. Why we are this way? And we find that the, the driving force is fear. Now, fear, to cover fear, it, we turn it into anger. And then we inflict pain on other people. But the deep, the driving force, there's very few feelings really that we humans have. And the rest are associated with it. That's fear, uh, love, um, what's it anger. Mm -hmm. The other such as going around. So, yeah, I'm trying to um, get away a bit of from that cage where I was put and uh, uh, really think about how we can make. Because that's where it is. And if we are analyzed, I mean, no, this is not a mystery. I mean, if you have been analyzed many times, talked about, oh, the life of, 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 of Adolf Hitler, or the life of uh, Pinochet, and you always find, or, or the life of whoever, I mean, a, a mass murderer, and you always find a child that has been abused, a child that has been mistreated, a child that. Now, why? Why? There are other reasons why more men kill than, than, than women, although there were uh, women torturers where, where I was uh, at the time. Uh, but that's more trying to be like a, like a boy, like a man, rather than being the woman itself. Uh, it's more difficult. I, I f have to face my uh, torture, the, the murder of my, I call my wife, it was Lord in court, in front of the judge. There was a chamber stove. And uh, I had to face him. Okay, I faced the guy uh, there. And, um, and my, my, my fear was that I would, because he was denying everything. No, I was an analyst there in that sense. No, I, I, I don't recall that. And I, my fear was that he would deny me as well. And everybody was saying, what are you doing? He's denying everything. He said, what is he doing? That morning I thought, I, I drank strong coffee. I armed myself with a bottle of water and went to the thing and, and he couldn't. He couldn't deny. That was my triumph. And the judge used to tell me, uh, the judge said, what would you do? I would put them away. You know what the, the worst punishment for these guys? Uh, I would put them in, in therapy. In, for life. <laughs> <laughs> because killing, do you know what I mean? And I thought about killing him before when I first arrived in exile, preparing my plan. But you realize that I've been there, death is a gift in a way. He doesn't deserve that. And I have to convince this woman, who is a woman judge, I have to convince her to send him that, and she did. And I did convince her. And she helped me as well. 
He's like, well, what is kind of leading question? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, we done it. And uh, mm. so I couldn't, I couldn't harm an person, torture somebody, uh, probably in self-defense I would beat up somebody, uh, things like that, normal kind of interaction with people. But I, I couldn't do it. I, I, I love that you talk about your spirit experiences and what comes out is your humanness and your love of life because you have gone deep to those places that most of us don't go, the way we need to go in order to discover that person is me too mm. and I might have been the torturer mm. as you know I'm not just a victim. I'm also part of it. Mm. And it's kind of how, how do we get that? How do we actually begin to realize this? It's not all about what's happening over there. It's what's mm. happening in me. Mm. You know, what mm. am I doing? How am I party to this? Mm. Mm. So I think it's important talking. I'm um, talking is one thing. And the other thing is, uh, by talking, I think we have to create safe place because you need a safe place. That's true. And I had that. I was lucky. You have to have a, 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 a safe place. Mm -hmm. uh, this brilliant man that is not longer with us, who, who was a therapist, and he was there. And look at him. Sometimes it, I was completely lost. And he was there. I was not here, not in this world. I was in the past. I was in the catacombs. And he was there. It's a safe place. Contain, contain. Mm -hmm. So let's create that, let's talk about things, let's make it possible. And, uh, and I think this change, I'm afraid, has to be radical. You can't do, you can't negotiate. I try to negotiate with myself. My friend, uh, we've got a friend, who we, we work together in, in the company. He is a um, therapist as well and teacher at university in Geneva. We always keep in touch. When I started this process, uh, this is what I'm going to do. And he said to me, you're going, you know, you're going to kill yourself. And because we've been together in the camp, that you, can't, you don't need many words to talk. And I say, I know, but I don't like that one. Mm -hmm. That one is giving. I'm, I'm, there's another one. I'm sure there's another one. And it's not me. I didn't know at the time. It's just trust. You have to trust that it's nice. It's not like this. Great guys. And it is. Thank you.